Pterodactyl here, and today we're going to be doing the restoration of the hammer knife mower. We're going to take you through the restoration process that I'm going to do on it. So I got the hammer knife mower all stripped down. It's all taken apart. It's a pretty simple machine as you saw. There's not a lot to it. So what I want to show you is the hammer knife shaft that's in there with the hammer knives on it. Because remember, I had the tool for removing the cotter pins. And a lot of y'all are probably thinking, I want to know how that tool works. Show us how that tool works, Terrell. All right, I'll show you how it works. Pretty simple, and it works pretty good. So you got to get the, the little pin loosened up first. So I was taking a hammer, kind of knocking it back and forth. And then it tells you that if the little leg is not bent more than 45 degrees, then all you do is take the tip of this and stick it in the eyelet part of the, of the cotter pin, and then just use this as leverage to pry it out. And then what I was doing is putting my thumb over it and kind of turning it back and forth and pulling it out of there. Now I do know they make a regular, see, and you just pull it out. I do know they make a regular cotter pin puller, but this thing works pretty good. And then you just, they have to take a pair of flyers or whatever and pull the pin out. So now I'm going to have to go through and sharpen all of these. So you sharpen them just like you'd sharpen anything else. Here I sharpened this one already. You know, there's not a lot to sharpen and stuff. You know, we're not, uh, we're not working on the Mars Rover here. It's a lawnmower. Mm -hmm. So to sharpen it, I'll show you how to do it. There's a couple of different ways. You can do it on a bench grinder, or you can use a wizard wheel, cutoff wheel. But it works better if you get a thick disc, because this is a thicker one. And then what you would do is just follow that angle. You know, there's an angle on there. So you would just take the wizard wheel and just go back and forth. Here, let me show you. So you just want to follow that angle. Until it's sharp. And you can come across the back. And then you would do the same on this side. Look at there, look at there, nice and sharp. Ready to do some hammer knifing. Same thing on the bench grinder. Just follow that angle. So it's sharp. There it is, all nice and sharp again. I'll probably do all mine on the bench grinder. It's easier than holding it. I mean, with the wizard wheel, you probably have to clamp it in the vise, you know, so you don't accidentally hurt yourself. But those are two options on sharpening. So yeah, that's how that tool works. And then when you put it back together, you use this end to bend, you know, one of the legs on it. You know, you got to hold the other side and then you just bend it. That's what the other side's for, bending the, the new cotter pin. Now, I was doing the wheels and somebody put house paint on there. So I took some uh, paint stripper and put it on the wheel 
and it's spray you can see this was this was that house paint. But I thought it was red. Remember in the part one? I thought it was red and I went and bought this red because the only thing that was painted red was the clutch. Well somebody else might have painted that red. So I stripped it off with the paint stripper and look what it this is the color that the wheel was. So there's that red. I shot a little spot of that red on there. And I said, that don't look red. That looks more like it's orange. So I'm gonna paint the wheels orange, not red. I'm gonna try to match, you know, as close as I can to that, which is I'm basing off of these paint chips which I'm probably gonna snack on these later. You ever eat paint chips? Don't eat paint chips. This might have lead in it, probably kill you. So I already went ahead and sandblasted one wheel in my blast cabinet, because it makes it quicker once I uh, strip that paint off. And then I even hit the, the black rubber part of it with the sandblaster. And I kind of cleaned it up. So now it's ready to be primed and painted with that orange. Let me throw this away. See, this was the other side that was all rusty. So it's kind of hard to tell what that color was originally. So good thing I put that stripper on there. So we're going to go with the orange. It's as close as I can get to it. All right, let's, what else? Oh, I got my uh, decals back, look at that. Look at that beautiful job. There's the new Mott Hammer Knife Mower decal that's gonna go on the deck. Now I sent the deck out to the powder coater already. Jeff over at Precision Powder Coat, he's got the deck. He's gonna do it in that buttercup yellow like we did the Ride Master. Fill me up, fill me up, buttercup, baby, won't you let me know? Hammer knife go. Something like that. You love when I sing, don't you? So he's going to do it in that buttercup yeller. And a corner of the deck was corroded because it's aluminum. And part of it had got corroded away. So we're going to show you some pictures now of how I drilled some 1 16th holes in the front there where it was corroded away and then I took the tarot putty which we sell in our online store and the reason I drilled the holes in there is so when I squeeze the tarot putty on it you'll see in the picture it goes through the holes to make it make it grab to that deck because it was right on the corner of it and I'm like how am I gonna fill that in this aluminium is all contaminated if we try to weld it, build it up with aluminum weld, it's just gonna, it's just gonna eat it away, it's gonna make it worse, and then we're gonna end up ruining the deck. So I'm gonna I put the tarot putty on there as you can see, and then we're gonna sand it all nice and smooth, because the tarot putty can take 500 degrees of heat and then he can powder coat over it. So you'll see the deck when it's all done. You won't even be able to tell that that corner was all eaten away. And I also got my Clinton decal for the engine. And we're gonna be selling these in our online store if you want this Clinton decal. Maybe you're doing a Clinton engine. I haven't seen too many of these that said four cycle. There were a bunch of other Arrowhead Clinton decals, but not this one. So this is ours. It's the one we had made up, and that's gonna go on there. So now this is ready to be blasted, and I can paint that. Oh, and I found a, de a debris screen for the Clinton. Remember, it was missing a debris screen and a bunch of grass was getting all up in here. And I'm gonna add a throttle, but I don't wanna put the throttle on the handle, so I don't wanna drill any holes in the handle. And then I found this old, Oregon makes this old type. Because this is like in the old fashioned, this is like the one that's on the Ride Master, but the Ride Master one's got a knob on it. So there's the Oregon part number for this one. 
This thing was about eight feet long. I cut it down. So I want to have a throttle on it so I can throttle it up or down because I'm going to keep this thing. I got a use for it. I was going to sell it, but I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to mount that. That's going to go like right here. This throttle is going to go like right in this area. So I'll be able to throttle it up and down and kill the engine. You'll see when I get it all together. And let's see, is that everything? That's where we're at right now. This is an easy restoration on this one. It's gonna be nice when it's all done. Now Jeff told me that he might have the handle back tomorrow. I only got him sandblasting the handle because it won't fit my blast cabinet because I'm gonna paint it with that green. And uh, he said he might have the deck and the handle back here by tomorrow. So if I get everything painted up, I still gotta clean the engine and uh, get all that paint off the gas tank. I'll have to put some paint stripper on there and strip all that paint off. Well, we're gonna do the engine in black and then I'll paint the clutch uh, orange too. But remember, it was red. That kind of looks like the red on the wheel. Yeah, now it looks a little different. So somebody might have painted that red. But I know this is the original color for that. All right, so that's where we're at on the restoration. And then we'll put it back together and be hammer knifing again. It'll be hammer time. Well, we got the mower deck back from Jeff from powder coating and look Look at that repair we did with the tarot putty where the corner was rotted away Look at that Can't even tell That tarot putty did a wonderful job You can see a little bit of the putty on the inside so we got this back, this is all ready to go. Just gotta chase the holes and stuff on it. Looks good, don't it? Got the handle painted. Got the wheels painted. Now I know what you're saying, Terry, you said you were gonna do them in orange because it looked orange. Well, let me tell you about that started studying that orange and stuff and I didn't like that orange. It was gonna look too much Halloween with the black and the orange. And then I really started looking at the clutch when I started cleaning the clutch up and the clutch was that red. Then I started looking at the decal that I had made and it's got that red in it so that orange wasn't gonna go with it. The red looks a lot better. The red goes with the green and the yellow. So we're going with the red. Now I know what you're all saying. Terrell, Terrell, you showed us the cans of the colors, but you didn't tell us the name of the colors. You're right, you're right. I can hear you through the camera. This is apple green from this premium decor paint. I don't know if they sell this in your area, but this was the apple green. I like this spray paint over Rust-Oleum. The only reason I do is because it seems like that Rust-Oleum, and you'll agree with me after I say this, seems like those nozzles clog up a, no a lot. Even though it looks like they use the same nozzles that Rust-Oleum do. But I grabbed this paint out of the cabinet after it's been in there for months and I can still spray it. I grabbed that Rust-Oleum out and it's all clogged up. Like I need to give it prune juice or something to unclog it. So here's the red. And that's called Americana. It's Americana. That's the red. Americana. Do you like the way I say Americana? But that's the red. And that matches. 
Now we're working on the engine now, getting that painted. And look, look what some paint stripper and pressure, pressure washing did to it. All I did was put a bunch of paint stripper on it. Then I hit it with the pressure scrubber. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. That's a ham's burp. And I got it nice and clean. Now you're probably thinking, where did you get that? Where did you get that chrome dipstick? Where did you get that from? That's not, that's the original one. Once I ate the paint off of it, I discovered it was aluminium. It's made from aluminium. So, I sanded it with some sandpaper and then went finer and finer and I got this metal polish called Hoosier Metal Polish. Look it up, Hoosier Metal Polish. Probably took me 15, 20 minutes from sanding to polishing to make it look like that. That's just wonderful. Hoosier Metal Polish. Look at that, looks like chrome. And that was aluminium, just like this aluminium here. That was just from sanding and applying the polish and just rubbing it real good. So I already started painting some of the parts. I got the recoil all did, took it apart, sandblasted it, painted it, put a new rope in it, put it all back together. Here's the cover, blower shroud. Stripped all the paint off with the paint stripper, put it in the blast cabinet. Did this little adapter. This is a uh, satin black. I didn't want that gloss black. This is that satin black, same company. These people. Premium decor. When you want your decor to be premium, get premium decor. Spray paint, endorsed by Pterodactyl. They are not paying me for this free endorsement. And then when I stripped the fuel tank, when I stripped the cap, I noticed the cap is chrome. They painted over the chrome cap, so now we're gonna have a nice chrome cap. So this is, again, paint stripper, stripped it. It's ready for paint. Did the wheels. As I showed you in those photos, I used a real thin pinstripe masking tape to go around it and then masked it bigger and bigger with bigger masking tape. You know, one inch and then two inch. But the little thin masking tape. So now I'm gonna paint the tires and I'm gonna paint that with this old can of black tire dressing that I had. I've had this for years. I think I bought this in 1985. And this stuff is still good, I think. I think it's still good. Here, this screwdriver, let's take a peek. Let's take a peek inside. This has been in the cabinet for a while. Oh yeah, look. It's, it's thick. But it does say on the can you can thin it with naphtha. If you know what that is, you can buy that naphtha. So I'll put a little naphtha in there. We'll thin her down a little bit. And then we're gonna brush that on. And then those tires are gonna look like brand new. They're gonna be all nice and shiny black. I did the shaft here. Threw that in the blast cabinet. I wasn't gonna do this, I wasn't gonna blast it, cause I thought it's underneath the deck and it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna be in the grass and the weeds and gonna get all beat up, so why, why do all that? And then Junior said, Paul, you need to blast that and just throw, just throw some black paint on it. You don't have to get a powder coated or nothing, but you know, it'll look a lot better when it's done. It ain't gonna take you that long. Throw it in a blast cabinet and Blast it real quick and then throw some black paint on there. And then I still have to, I'm not going to paint these. These aren't getting painted and cleaned. Because these are the blades. But I do need to sharpen them all. So I still need to go through and sharpen all them. And then reinstall it. 
But that's where we're at so far. We're, we're, we're uh, picking away at it for the restoration. That's why we're doing this, to show you the steps. You know, a lot like the Ride Master where I didn't show you all the steps where I did it. We're showing you all the little steps that I'm doing here. So yeah, maybe you can pick up these pointers when you're, you know, this will help you when you're restoring your project. You know, sandblasting, paint stripper, paint stripper and sandblasting, all that kind of stuff. So this is a, a, a small project, but yet it's still involved and takes a lot of time, especially the details. The devil is in the details. That's what makes it look nice. The little details like this. This little detail here, the little chrome gas cap detail, the little hardware details. That's what makes it pop when you get it done. When it's all done, when people come to look at it, they're like, oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah, because of those little details, little subtle details is what does it. Now, there are a couple parts missing from the mop mower. And if you look here, what was missing were these side plates and this deflector and this leaf shield. Now the leaf shield I'm not concerned about because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use that on this machine. But I would like to have these side panels in this, which you can't get anymore. So what I ended up doing was I ended up tracing these out from a piece of paper. I put a piece of paper on top, shined a light through it so I could trace that part. I cut it out with a pair of scissors. And since this is a photo of all the actual parts, I took that part and laid it on top of the deck so I can kind of gauge or scale the size of this part. And you know what? Here it is. That's how I scaled it. The same with this. And I found another picture of the mower, a cutaway view, and it showed that deflector which we'll show you in a second here. So on this cutaway photo, they show that deflector how it's bent. So I was able to also recreate that part. So this will have a slight bend to it. And this is bent up like this, and this is bent like this. So this will be like this, and then this will have a slight bend to it. And then of course there's a couple of holes drilled in here so I can mount it. Again, made a template. So I got me some 16 gauge steel, which is about a 16th of an inch thick. Because I don't know what gauge steel the stuff was, but I'm sure it wasn't real heavy. And I traced it out. Now I need to cut it out. So instead of using a wizard wheel, I thought, you know what? I got a wood bandsaw at home. I got this Delta bandsaw for cutting wood. I'm like, they gotta make a metal cutting blade for it. So I went online and I found this place called Blade Serpent. And I typed in the model number of this on their website and it told me the length of the blade and then they had all different blades I could buy and they had a metal cutting blade, a 3 8 wide metal cutting blade. And I thought that's great. Now I took my little wood, my little wood bandsaw. Now I can cut steel on it. I've had this thing for a few years, and thought, you know what? That would come in handy if I could cut steel on it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut these out. It did a good job cutting that out. And I got my little stick on light here. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. 
This is by Mycanic. This is a nice little handy light. It's magnetic. So that worked good. So I got a little spotlight on there. So I cut it out. I'll have to clean it up a little bit. And I'll drill my holes in there. I'll cut the other one out. And then I'll send them off to Jeff, have him powder coat it, buttercup, yeller. Now this one, I just gotta clean it up and put my bends in there. And then we'll drill the holes in it and we'll send that off to Jeff too to get that powder coated. There's your dinner. I cut my pieces out, sanded them, sandblasted. I fit them up to the hammer knife mower to make sure they fit, and they fit. So now I can send them off, get them powder coated. Here's that deflector, all bent up, fitted, made sure it fit. So in order to bend this, I needed to buy a new tool, which I was gonna buy anyway. And here it is, that Harbor Freight brake press, or brake bender where you put the sheet metal in there and you can bend it because I needed to bend this and this and I wanted a nice clean bend so went to Harbor Freight and picked this up it works pretty good for light steel it says it'll bend up the 12 gauge if you're gonna do that you're probably gonna have to extend these these aren't long enough. This is 16 gauge and I really had a pull on this thing to bend it. So if you have longer bars on here, that'll give you more leverage. Who knows, you might break the tools trying to do it, but that's what welders are for. So now I can send this off, get this powder coated, and then uh, We'll unveil the hammer knife mower and use it again and see how it works. Well, we're all done with the mop mower and here it is, all restored. Look at it. Turned out nice. Beautiful, I think. It really turned out nice. So remember I said the devil is in the details? Let's look at some of the details. And this is one of them. The tire black, and then white leather the tires, stainless steel bolt. Did that apple green on the on the debris screen and the apple green on the tank straps, kind of dress it up a little. More stainless hardware. The reproduced Clinton decal. The mop decal, some more stainless. All these little bolts are stainless. I went online and I found these indented bolts. Then I added this throttle without having to alter anything. All I had to do was make a bracket. My idea behind the throttle is, since this has got that clutch, that grip clutch, I may want to idle this down to get that shaft to quit spinning in case I need to move something. That way I don't have to turn it on and off all the time. Now I can idle it down and I can throttle it up. But all the little, little bit of stainless here and there and the little hints of green. Sharpened all the blades. Blades are all nice and sharp now. And then here's our the little deflector I made that was missing and these side shields which we're gonna I'm gonna install these and we're gonna cut regular grass with it. We're not gonna cut high weeds. But before we do all that, let's go over the cost of this project. And you'll be surprised at how cheap it was. Now this is a good project for you grass rats out there to do with your kids, with your son or daughter. The little grass rats. You might want to start off with something. This isn't going to break the bank. And you got a nice little project that you did that you could actually use. So we got the mower for free from Tarot Fan Robin. 
And then I had to repower it. I got the engine for $100, that Clinton engine, which ran. I just had to rebuild the carburetor on it to get it to uh, run with that air filter on there, which all I did was just take it apart and cleaned it real good and put it back together and it worked. I didn't have to put any parts into it. A couple of gaskets. Uh, the machining of the shaft, because we needed to machine it down to 5 eighths, that was $40. The mop decal, which I had recreated, cost me 20. The Clinton decal, which we're selling in our online store now, you can buy that Clinton decal if you got some Clintons you want to restore, $6. The spray paint, the rattle can paint, $15.95. To have the handle sandblasted by Jeff and to do the deck and powder coated was $50. That's pretty reasonable to do all that. And then all the stainless hardware that I bought, miscellaneous hardware, came to about $25. A little less than $25, so I just said $25. So we got a grand total of... $256.95. That's not bad. You'll spend that on a brand new push mower, a junk one that you buy nowadays. Now the throttle I had, you know, some of the stuff I had because I already had it, which you may have too, you know, but not bad. Less than $300 to do this. So hey, maybe you'll find some junk lawnmower somewhere, a vintage one that needs some work. And you'll have a nice little project that you could do with your with your family. So now I'm going to install those shields on there. I'm going to put it on its lowest cutting height because there's three different positions on there. Right now I got it in the highest. I'm going to put it on the lowest. We're going to install them shields and we're just going to cut regular grass out in front of the shop here and see how it does. Got the side shields and the deflector mounted. Look, looks factory. Looks like it was factory made. Recreated parts. Now all we have to do is go outside and fire it up, 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 fire it like a regular push mower. Like it says in the manual, when you want to cut tall grass, you got to take those guards back off. So we're going to take the guards off, put it on its highest position, and then we're going to go out and cut some tall stuff now that we got those blades sharpened. Because when we did it originally, the blades weren't sharp. Here's that area that we did a few weeks ago when we had it running. We're going to go back through it again. Come on, Ma. Let's see what you got, Ma.
can only take so much. Like any tool that has its limitations, I was trying to feed it too fast, but did you see how it grabbed those little trees and sucked them in like a kipper shredder? Wow, this thing works good. I bet you if it had a newer, more modern, higher horsepower engine, it'd probably even do better. I had to tweak the governor a little bit, because I don't know if you noticed when I was cutting the regular grass, governor didn't seem to be kicking in the kicking in when I had it under a load. So when I took it back in and took those shields off, I readjusted the governor and now it seems to be kicking up under a load. It's just slow and steady wins the, wins the race when you're trying to go through this uh, thick stuff. But man, this thing really works good. I like the way it was taking those little trees and just sucking them right in. Spitting them out. Look at it just chewed them all up. I like the little mop. You're a good little dude, mop. There's only one other thing I should have did that I didn't do. And that was probably replace those bearings on that shaft. But since they spun, I thought, well, they're okay. But I don't know if you could hear it but they are awfully noisy. So that's one other thing that I could do, but I mean, that's quick and easy. This thing, there's nothing to it. It's very basic. And that's how they should make things again. Very simple and basic that do a good job. I don't know why this didn't catch on. I don't know why they still don't make more of these because man, that thing really did a good job. Well, there it is. Restoration on the mop mower. All I need to do now is Replace the bearings, that shouldn't cost more than maybe another $20, $20, $30. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tarot Fixes All. I don't have a tarot shirt on, I'm wearing a suit like the guy in a brochure. Follow me with your hammer knife mowers on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, if you got any of these mowers, I'd like to see pictures of them. Maybe before and after. Maybe you'll be inspired to drag it out now and restore it like Terrell did. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel and some other Terrell stuff. Like I said, we got the, the Clinton sticker. And I think I got, I think I had to make a couple more of those mock stickers. So if you're interested in that, get a hold of us through our uh, web store. Like I said, they were 20 bucks. So if you want one, it's going to be 20 bucks. That's what it cost me. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Inexpensive restoration on old mower. That does a good job. Good boy. Good little boy. You're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. You like that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I see your flail knives are wagging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good.